We're still talking about the best places to live in Costa Rica. However, this next place reminds me of where I'm from, Louisiana. For a state that is small as it is, it's amazing how different it is the further you travel south. As you travel south, the people are different. The food is different. The culture is different. All of a sudden, people are eating crawfish, boudin, jambalaya, meal maya. Everything is different. And this next place in Costa Rica is a lot like that. Once you arrive, well, you begin to see how different the people are. The food is different. The vibe is different. All of a sudden, you begin to think, I've made it to a whole nother country. Let's see where we're going today. Welcome to another beautiful day in paradise and to part four of our five part series where we're talking about the best places to live in Costa Rica. And today we're gonna to take you to the Caribbean side of Costa Rica. And surprisingly, the Caribbean side is very, very different than the Pacific side, isn't it, Rebecca? It is, it's quite different. It's surprisingly different. So it's so surprisingly different that, you know, Rebecca kind of loves that sexy Caribbean feel. However, it can be quite dangerous. But before we talk about it, I, we do have a quick announcement to make. You know, Rebecca and I have been talking about having some fun little uh, gifts, uh, rewards. Uh, uh, but to qualify, you have to be a subscriber. So if you haven't subscribed yet, take a moment to subscribe right now. Push that notification bell so that you'll be notified when new videos go live. But these little gifts and rewards are just some little things that's really going to help you. And they're fun. Make sure that you subscribe. And we look forward to giving you more information about Costa Rica. So before we get started, let's just do a real quick recap, Rebecca. Well, in our previous three videos of the series, of the five series that we're doing, we talked mostly about the mountainous areas of Costa Rica. For these next two videos, we're gonna talk about the Pacific Coast and the Caribbean Coast. So we're gonna be going to some beach towns or places near the beach where we've been talking about the cool, comfortable mountain ranges. Right. But you know, we're mountain people, but not everybody are. Some people love the beach. And today, we're gonna to go to some of the most beautiful beaches on Costa Rica. Right, even though we're, we love the mountains, we really have enjoyed our stays in the beach. Sometimes I wish I could live on the beach. However, I really enjoy just going to the beach, uh, just enjoying it and coming back to the cool, comfortable temperatures. Mm -hmm. So Rebecca, tell me, what is the most favorite thing about the Caribbean coast that, for you? Wow, I've, I've been thinking about that and I'm having a hard time deciding. There's really three things about the Caribbean side that I absolutely loved. And I guess what was my most favorite thing was the color of the ocean, the different colors of blue. The color on the Caribbean side of the ocean is so blue, it, it doesn't seem real. And the ocean is beautiful on the Pacific side, but the Caribbean side is just really, really blue. I can remember riding us, riding the motorcycle and get it reaching, um, reaching the coast and coming around that curve and just seeing that massive, gorgeous blue. And uh, there's nothing li quite like it. And you know, surprisingly, the, the, the colors of the water were tremendously different. You know, like you said, on the Pacific side, because the Pacific is so huge and you see the waves and it's constantly rolling, you know, although pretty, you know, you, you see a lot of the mud and the, the colors, you know, it's not muddy, ugly, but it, it's just not clear. Where on the Caribbean side, wow, it's almost crystal clear. You can, you know, they don't get the humongous waves at the Pacific side. So you do get those beautiful, beautiful, it's like those tropical blues that are just gorgeous, aren't they? Yes, really gorgeous. And so uh, the colors, that's one of your most favorite things. Anything else? Yeah, I think the second thing was um, the Kawita National Park. It was really, really nice, um, very clean and well, well maintained and you could see wildlife almost every time, regardless of the time of the day. I, I, every time we went for a walk there, a run on the beach there, we saw some form of wildlife. 
and it's not a heavily populated place. Um, there are a lot of tourists like at the Kawita National Park, but it, it wasn't overcrowded or anything. It, it was really pleasant. Right. It was really nice in that area, wasn't it? Yes. Very nice. And I guess really the third thing <laughs> is kind of a silly thing, but my favorite restaurant in all of Costa Rica. We've <laughs> talked in other videos about our favorite restaurants in different areas, but my favorite restaurant in all of Costa Rica was on the Caribbean side, Cokies. Yeah. You know, um, for a lot of people, I guess that might seem a little bit silly, but for us, we really just enjoy nature. And you know, we're not into things, we're into uh, adventures, we're into memories. And Cokies was really just a top notch restaurant. It was not at all the typical Tico type restaurant. When you went there, you felt like you was at an event. I mean, the service was top notch. The food was top notch. And because it was right on the beach, you could just look at the beautiful colors. You could watch the tourists go by. The ocean and um, from, from your table. And you could, like he's saying, you could see people walking by. One time when we were having a meal, Puerto Viejo was holding a little parade. Right. And so we sat at Kofi's at our meal and watched the parade and go by. Watch the parade go. about that area and we haven't even gotten into talking about it much just <laughs> talking about some of our favorite things okay <laughs> so I tell you what uh, before we get into all of the pros and cons let's take a look at some of the communities that are right there along the Lemoyne to the end at Manzanillo area so let's take a look at our map and we'll talk about some of those areas our first area that we're talking about is Coweta and like you said Wow, it does have a beautiful national park, lots and lots of wildlife, and that's where we lived for almost a year, wasn't it? Right. So it's it's almost like a, um, I suppose Puerto Viejo is the touristy area. That's where everybody goes for, you know, if they're going there for a vacation on, on that side. And Coweta is kind of the outskirts of that area where the national park is. And so you don't have to, you know, it's mostly locals in Coweta. Some some tourists, but it's not nearly as uh, touristy as the Puerto Viejo. They yeah, there had, was there was some nice little restaurants. It was right there on the beach, wasn't it? Yeah, and there were several places in Coweta to rent, um, you know, to vacation rentals. And so I think some people caught on to that. You could not, you didn't have to stay in the Puerto Viejo area. You know, it's only. Um, about a 10, 15 minute drive from uh, Puerto Viejo. And so you could stay in a quieter um, place, experience the locals a little more, have the national park and still be 15 minutes from the from. restaurants and the nightlife and That's the right. beautiful beaches over at uh, Puerto Viejo. Which brings us to our next community. Just like Rebecca said, 10, 15 minutes away from Coweta was Puerto Viejo. Now. Puerto Viejo is the whole reason why that area is loaded with tourists. Sometimes you wonder, well, why there's so many tourists in Puerto Viejo? But the whole reason is it's a party town. It is. It's a party town. You know, there's no zip lines. There's no waterfalls. Puerto Viejo is a party town. That's where you go to party. It's got the sexy Caribbean feel and it's a party town. So there are just phenomenal amounts of tourists up and down. And so if you like to people watch, man sitting at one of the restaurants and looking at the tourists going back and forth, that was just a fun place. Yeah, and the beaches are really, really pretty there. One of the most important things is Puerto Viejo. While it was just a very nice place to visit, and if you're into the party scene, perfect place for you, not the place you want to live, okay? Great place to visit, but you don't want to live anywhere near Puerto Viejo, because Puerto Viejo in itself can be very, very dangerous, okay? And uh, 
while we don't like to focus on the negative, it's important you know the facts. Uh, it's a party town. Almost any party town is going to have lots of drugs. This is a story from the Costa Rican Star, dated Wednesday, October 14th, 2020. Costa Rican authorities find 2.9 tons of cocaine hidden in a container at the Lemoyne Terminals dock. It goes on to say a shipment of drugs was found hidden inside a container loaded with bananas at the terminal dock in Lemoyne. In total, drug control police found a total of 2,903 kilograms of cocaine in one container that was randomly selected to be scanned. So far, authorities have seized over 12,593 kilograms of cocaine hidden in containers. That is 27,762 pounds of cocaine that was seized from the Lemoyne port. You can only imagine how much cocaine actually makes it into Puerto Viejo every single year. And it never failed any time we went into Puerto Viejo to get us a meal, to stop somewhere to eat, uh, whether we was just driving through, uh, enjoying the beach, every single time and more than one time, somebody would say, hey, want some marijuana? No, thank you. I bought some cocaine. I got enough drugs. Thank you. I appreciate it, though. You, I mean, you just, it's just part of it, okay? And so just the nature of that does make it dangerous. We've heard of several people that, uh, one photographer that uh, he was killed and they took his camera. Uh, some girls that, you know, a couple of girls, two girls together thinking they were going to go sit on the beach and who got attacked you got to be careful so it's very important you can check out the statistics the crime rate on that caribbean side is twice as high as it is anywhere else in costa rica it doesn't mean there's not some safe places to live there because we felt very safe we around Coweta, didn't yeah, we yeah i felt fine in Coweta, um even home creek all that that area um i went shopping by myself went to the national park by myself but and I, and I even would have gone in uh, Puerto Viejo during the daytime by myself, maybe in the little shops, you know, doing some shopping, eat at a restaurant. But come nighttime, I would not have been by myself. Yeah. Um, even in the even, day... Even with another, uh, another person, um, you know, when you and I would go, we still were very careful, you know, about our surroundings, watching, um, yeah. because there's a lot of... 40-ish type things going on. That's right. And even in the daytime, I would highly uh, suggest that you don't find yourself away from people by yourself, okay? And so while it's, you know, fairly safe in the daytime, you want to make sure that you stay close to people so that, you know, nothing's going to happen. Always keep your eye on your belongings. Always keep your eye within, uh, uh, keep your vehicle within eye shot because too many people's vehicles have been broken into. If they, if they saw a backpack on the seat, well, they're going to break that glass and steal the backpack. Yeah. So don't make that mistake, okay? Right. And the murders that you mentioned earlier, those happened in the early, early morning hours before most people were out. And these people were um, had gone off by themselves um, and they were easy, you know, easy targets, I suppose. Is That's right. Or late, late at night, you know. So, you know, anyway, it's just important that you know it can be very dangerous there. But if you use some common sense precautions, you shouldn't have a problem. Just be aware of it. So enough on the negative. Puerto Viejo, uh, sexy Caribbean vibe, uh, party town. But let's move on to our next little area, our next community, uh, just a few minutes down from Puerto Viejo, a place called Cockles. I might be pronouncing that wrong, but yeah. anyway. We're not sure if it's Cockles or Coakley's. I've heard it, I think, both ways. <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure it out, and maybe you will too if you come this way. But Coakley's or Cockles, that area, uh, nice beaches, wasn't it? Right. Matter of fact, that was one of the few beaches where it was white sandy beaches instead of the typical black beaches. Isn't that, am I correct? Well, the black beaches were more um, by Coweta and, and down right. toward and the Right, and Coakley's had white beaches and on and down, wasn't peak, it? Yeah, even a peak beach. Right, so uh, Coakley's beautiful little place, wasn't it? It was. And so when you leave Puerto Viejo going toward Coakley's, things start to get safer and less... Um, Tours, less touristy. Concentration. So 
back up a moment. So from Puerto Viejo up to Coakley's, that area is still very, very touristy. Once you leave Coakley's on down, which we're gonna talk about in a moment, like you said, oh, it felt much more safer and f a lot fewer tourists yeah. than you know the main tourist area, right? And the reason I believe um, that the touristy areas, there's a little more crime, is because it's, it's opportunity. Uh, mm -hmm. The tourists are there, they're tr they have money, you know, they have um, uh, cameras, like the guy was pretty much killed for his camera. They have things that are easily uh, stolen. Right. So, as you get away from the tourist areas. Yeah. Anytime you have more opportunity, you're going to have more crime. And, you know, like Rebecca said, you know, when we get to Coakley's and, and on down, not nearly as many tourists, not nearly right. as much crime. So in the Coakley's area, you know, there were nice places, you know, uh, in that area that you could find to rent and to live and more as we go further south. Right. And even though we're talking about the crime, we're talking about minimal, I mean, very few crimes in, in the area. Just, right. it's just be careful. Yeah, just be careful. Now, uh, Coakley's was nice, but uh, there's this one area that was very popular with a lot of gringos and foreigners, and uh, it's called, in case you like margaritas, it's called Margarita Hill. Lots of gringos lived up there, and it was this nice dirt road that went up the hill or up the mountain there, lots and lots of foreigners and lots of places to rent in that area but keep in mind you're not going to find those rentals on websites or anything it's going to be like some of the other places in the southern zone where you're going to have to get out there and walk around and talk to people to find rentals right. and you can find rentals fairly cheap but a great place to live because you're kind of it's a little cooler and you're just minutes away from the beach right it's similar to uh Tinamaste on the Pacific side. But not where, nearly as high. Right, not nearly as high and really close to the beach. Very close to the beach, right? So, you so get some altitude and you're only maybe five or ten minutes away from the beach. Right. So um, if we come back down the mountain from Margarita Hill and we continue south, we end up over an area that's called Playa Uva or Grape Beach, is that translated <laughs> to? <laughs> yeah, Playa Uva was my favorite um, scenic view on that side, you know, on the, on the Caribbean, because um, it was very tranquil. There were very few people there, and you could just sit on the beach, see the ocean, and I like to be able to see the white waters, you know, so I would look to the, it, I guess Playa Uva was in kind of a, um, a cove. Yes. Yeah. And so you could look to the right and look to the left, and see the land going out into the ocean, see the waves hitting the yeah. hitting the land. You know, you could see um, just some phenomenal, phenomenal views, views right there, there, wasn't it? Yeah. And some really pretty beaches there in Playa Uva. Yes. Yeah. So going down from Playa Uva, you're now down at the very southern end of that side of Costa Rica, which is uh, Manzanillo, if I'm pronouncing that right. And Manzanillo, a nice area to live, uh, not a whole lot of tourists because you're now toward the end and closer to the border of Panama. A lot more authentic um, Jamaican vibe, Ticos mixed in, you mm -hmm. know, so. And so areas that are nice there. So that talks about those areas. So uh, the thing to understand is that that whole Caribbean side feels completely different than all of Costa Rica. And why is that? Well, there's a Jamaican vibe. That's right. And um, when you're there, uh, the music is different, the food is different, um, the people are different. It's, it's just, a, it's more like a, visiting the Bahamas. That's right. And um, if you if you do your research, you'll see that uh, everywhere on the internet, it's all described as the Caribbean side has this Afro-Jamaican vibe to it because those are the two uh, nationalities that are somehow mixed. I don't fully understand that, but it's an Afro-Jamaican vibe. It really has this cool Jamaican feel and the music is different. And so it's com it, if you only saw that part of Costa Rica, then you've done yourself a disservice because you don't really get to feel the, what I call the real Costa Rican because if you get on the Pacific side, well, it's not Jamaican at all and you feel the real Tico culture, don't you? You know, So you have to understand that side is completely different. Not saying it's good or bad, just different. Yeah. 
Rica. And it, it is the real Costa Rica. It's just it's just it's just a it's and the real afro jamaican costa rica on the caribbean side yeah. and because it's so isolated there's really only one way in and one way out um there hasn't been a lot of mixing um, of the two cultures it they have been able to preserve that culture there because there's you know we've met people on this side on, on the pacific side of costa rica that have never never been to the other side right. because it's such a journey um you got to go back up to san jose and then go back down past through the and and, uh, and go down the coast so we've met plenty of people that if they're going to go to the beach they're not going to go that far that's you know, right there's plenty of beaches on the on the pacific side there are some mountain people that we've met that never even went to never they, been to the beach they live in costa rica and they've never left the mountain area right so um there's also a lot of native indian um influence yeah. on on that side we met a lot of people in the caribbean that i think more so than the ticos there's a lot of the indigenous right Indians, there um, i think i think you're settled, right yeah they were i in think that there's area. more indigenous indians uh, with the, the with the Jamaicans, and there are Ticos on that side. I, that's that's what I, the impression that I get. So it's mostly the Jamaican influence and the indigenous tribes that are on that side. Whereas on the Pacific side, we really only see um, the indigenous tribes in the mountains and close to the border down by Panama. Right. But um, on the Caribbean side, there's a lot of indigenous people. That brings us into talking about the cons because one of the cons that Rebecca mentioned is that really there's only one way in and one way out which can make it very, very difficult. Uh, while that has preserved the traditions and the culture in that area, wow, how very difficult it is to actually travel anywhere from the Lemoyne side, and especially if you're all the way at the end, all the way up to San Jose. So let's talk about some of those cons. Um, the most important con is that the crime rate is twice as bad as anywhere else in Costa Rica. We did talk about that, so we're not gonna harp on it. We're gonna move on into the very next con, which is... Well, and I wanna mention about the, the crime, the concentration of that percentage is in Limon, the city of Limon. Um, it's a port city. You know, it's it's not that it's in Puerto Viejo and all of that, even though more crime takes place, but the majority of the crime on that side takes place in Limon. Right, and Limon is really the uh, first area you come into, and we didn't even talk about it, And uh, but we, we'll get there in just a moment. So you're right, the majority of the crime, I think, happens in Limon, and everybody in Costa Rica knows, don't go to Limon. It's just too dangerous, full of crime. And I guess it's because it's a port city and because of all our ships and the container ships come in, which then just add to the cons because if you have to travel on that highway going to San Jose, it's just, it's a nightmare because of all of the trucks carrying the containers going back and forth to San Jose. Oh, it's a nightmare. So if you have to travel to San Jose, which you have to, uh, the traffic is horrendous. And it's just a small two lane highway, very difficult to get around right. the trucks. There's lots of, um, during rainy season, there's lots of landslides. And while we live there, I'd say, I don't know if I had to guess, probably almost maybe 10 times, there were road closures that you know the road was closed for a day, at least a day, sometimes two days, uh, one time it was even three days because they had to repair the road for traffic to pass. So if you had an appointment or something, you just you had to cancel because there's really no easy route There's around. no other way around. Although they are building a new uh, highway, or at least there's talks of construction of a new highway a little further up um, that will be mostly for the transport of goods from the Caribbean side yeah. to the Pacific side, you know, all those big trucks that go back and forth. So, um, yeah, there's talks about it, but anyway, that could be a long way into it. So, uh, 
The other con is that you're not gonna find many gas stations over there, and gas is important. Matter of fact, as check out the map, there's only three gas stations that I know of. And so there is one that's in Lemoyne, as big as that city is, one in Pinhurst, and one down at Hone Creek. So uh, make sure that you always have plenty of gas, okay? Yeah. And they're probably individuals selling gas from, from their house by the, you know, the uh, milk jug gal, you know, or yeah, the if, Coke bottle leaders. If you talk to the locals, there's always an entrepreneur who goes and buys, uh, you know, big containers of gas, and then he just sells the gas out yeah. of his house to make but a little extra no, money. There's no signs. It's, That's it's right. It's not common knowledge, in other words. So. Right. You have to talk to locals. So that brings us to our next disadvantage, which is? There's no nice shopping on that side. That's right. While you can probably find everything you need, it's going to be very difficult, isn't it? Yes. And I, I had to go to Limon um, to do some, you know, the big grocery shopping that we needed. and. I didn't go very often because it, it just didn't feel safe. That's right. So if you're going to do any serious shopping, uh, while you can get it in Limon or you can get it at some of the you know supermarkets, it's probably best to stay away from Limon and just go all the way into San Jose and buy a month or two months worth of your groceries and then stock up. So uh, while they do have supermarkets, it's just not convenient. So anyway, you just know that your shopping is going to be a little bit of a disadvantage since it's not as developed. You're not going to have a lot of internet choices. Most of the area, I think the only internet choice is going to be the government ran internet, which is EC or Colby. So there wasn't a lot of internet choices there. Uh, that brings us into it's four and a half to five hours to the airport or San Jose, which means if you go to, depending on where you live at, it was four and a half, five hours just from Coweta or Puerto Viejo. So keep in mind, if you're going to do any serious shopping, if you got to go to the airport, we are talking four and a half, five hours all the way into San Jose. And there are buses that run. That's right. There are buses that run Very all over nice the place. Buses That's right. So that will carry you all the way to San Jose. <laughs> the public transportation is phenomenal in Costa Rica. Yes, but a word of caution: if you have a flight that you have to catch, I would not wait to the that day to leave. I would definitely leave the day before, That's just right. in case there's a landslide or you know just so many things because the road is only two lanes. That's right. So. Uh, which brings us to uh, our, our pros, but before we get into our pros, it's important to mention, because this is not a con or a pro, the weather is completely different on the Caribbean side. You know, on uh, this side, well, as you notice in the uh, video, it's a very, very overcast and cloudy day. We are at the end of rainy season, and on the Pacific side, you typically, almost everywhere, you've got six months of the dry season, six months of the rainy season but on the caribbean side it's more of a typical weather pattern that's similar to the united states where one day it's rainy one day it's sunny <laughs> that's right you never know it's going to be totally different so the weather is completely different on that side right and the storms that um stored up in the caribbean have some effect on that side of of uh, costa rica that's right now while hardly ever do you, you know i've never ever ever heard of a tornado in costa rica and rarely since we've been here surprisingly there's only been one hurricane that came close and we happen to be on the caribbean we, side <laughs> for the one hurricane they said they hadn't had a uh, a hurricane in over a hundred years yes. on that side and we happen to be there for it <laughs> we would be there so you know that's the good thing is you just don't have hurricanes and tornadoes in costa rica uh and so anyway uh, the weather is just beautiful, but totally different from the Pacific side. So let's talk about some of the pros of being over there. So we talked about all of the cons, and while some of those things are bad, the pros always outweigh the cons. And so our first pro is what? Anywhere in Costa Rica. That's right. So, and even though uh, the first pro is, um, even though it's isolated on that side from the rest of Costa Rica, they do have a really large hospital yeah. in Home Creek. They have a nice hospital that's right there in Hone Creek. Another pro is that the waters are absolutely beautiful and they've got some of the most beautiful beaches uh, and waters right there on that side. Our next pro is? 
some surfing, but it's not quite as good as on the Pacific if you're if you're a surfer. That's right. So most of the waves over there are some small waves. It's great for learning. However, right there at Cockles and uh, Punta Uva, more at Cockles, they actually had a surf tournament over there, surf right. competition. So, so it's not that the surfing is bad, it's just not quite as big uh, waves. That's right, the waves aren't nearly as big as the Pacific side, yeah. but you can do some surfing over there, okay? Uh, you can buy what you need, but it's going to be a bit of a challenge. But you can find pretty much anything you want. You're just going to have to go to a lot of smaller stores. Uh, another pro, if you love the nightlife, Porto Viejo is for you. So, you know, a lot of people like that. But be cautious, it can be dangerous. Uh, our next pro is... It's close to the border. So it makes uh, stamping out, you know, getting your passport stamped really easy because you just go that's right a few miles and cross the border into panama and it's a fairly simple process right there so that's right and it's important to know that because you know when you come to costa rica until you get your residency which could easily take you 18 months to two years sometimes longer uh you're going to have to stamp out every 90 days and going right there it like rebecca said it's a simple process at that Panamanian border okay which brings us to our next uh, pro which is because of the Afro Jamaican influence on that side the food is different it, there's a lot you know more variety and um, I like that spicy you know the jerk chicken and uh, those flavors that that area brings that's right so you can find some some really interesting foods over there so you definitely gonna get a, a taste of the Jamaican food while you're over there some spicy food that's right so it's it's different okay uh, our next pro is that you can find some rentals but like we said earlier you're not gonna find them on the websites and the price is gonna be uh, nice because it's not as developed over there so your prices are gonna be pretty decent and so as far as rentals and if you're gonna buy property you can find some decent prices yes. over there because it just doesn't have a ton of people living there while you got a ton of tourists because of the nightlife at Puerto Viejo your prices are gonna be decent and out um, beyond Punta Uber, there's still lots of beachfront property uh, that's for sale. That's right. And uh, and I, I guess our last pro, which is just an interesting really, is that uh, there were bike rentals. You saw a lot of people. It's the only place in Costa Rica I've seen that had bike rentals. You could rent a bike and you could just ride up and down the highways there and just kind of enjoy the scenery. Yeah, there was a lot of walking and bicycling, you know, because the road follows the the beach that's right and so you have the water the beach and then the road you know another interesting thing that i completely forgot about is that you could get a whole lot of coconut oil there remember yes it was like everywhere you went because there was so many coconuts uh, a lot of the locals made their own uh coconut oil and you can buy coconut oil coconut oil is supposed to be very very healthy and so you'd see the locals selling coconut oil in just about any kind of container they could find so they would clean out coke bottles and everything else and selling their coconut oil yeah so that was just an interest interesting note so now that you've heard all of the pros and cons and a little bit about the caribbean side that brings us to the question of the day now that you've heard the facts where do you think you'd prefer to live? Would you prefer to live on the Pacific side or would you prefer to live on the Caribbean side? Hey, leave your comments below this video. We'd like to know your thoughts about that. And before we begin to announce where we're going next week, make sure that you don't forget to subscribe right now so you can be eligible for some of those gifts and prizes that we're gonna start giving away very soon. And make sure that you leave all your comments and questions below. We'd love to hear your story and answer any of your questions remember our videos go live every thursday at 8 15 eastern standard time uh, as long as we don't run into any kind of hiccups okay so um other than that uh where are we going to be going next week rebecca next week we're going to be going to the pacific side the coastline and in particular estorios and 
that has been, in my opinion, of all of Costa Rica. The beaches on Estorios are the most fabulous, most beautiful beaches in all of Costa Rica. So next week, we're going to be taking you to the coastline on Estorios. And as far as that goes, we're going to see you next week as we continue our five-part series where we're talking about the best places to live in Costa Rica.